Hey folks, Alex McMahon here with Evolve Nutritional Therapy. This is the second video on our series on metabolism. So today we're going to be covering our sources of stress that are actually causing your metabolic rate to be lower and for you to burn those calories throughout the day. So an easy way to think about it is anything that is very high stress is actually going to cause your metabolism to lower. On the flip side, anything that causes stress to come down will actually higher your metabolic rate. So let's go ahead and cover some of these. The very first thing is not eating enough. When people chronically undereat, it's actually a stress on the body. Now, while it is an effective strategy for losing weight in the short term, long term people always plateau, stall out, and hit a wall. Part of the reason for this is we have a basic built-in evolutionary mechanism that's designed to keep us alive in times of famine. So if our energy expenditure and our calories are even, when our calories come down for a long enough time, our energy expenditure matches it to keep us in an equilibrium. The next thing is too much chronic cardio. One of the problems with chronic cardio, and I'm not referring to people who do a 30 to 45 minute run a few times a week, but the people who are hitting multiple hours per day, is that it releases an abundance of the stress hormone cortisol, which will actually lead to a breakdown of muscle. Muscle mass and retention of muscle mass is one of the main things that we can do to keep the metabolic rate high. Next up is a lack of sleep. So if you've listened to any of my videos or watched them before, you've obviously heard me talk about sleep. One of the big things is that sleep and lack of is going to make you more insulin insensitive. That means your body will use carbohydrates less efficiently and your body will actually have other nutrients delivered less efficiently. So you'll have a harder time on a basic cellular level getting energy from your food. The next thing is poor quality inflammatory foods. So inflammatory foods can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people because everybody's a bio individual and how they react to foods is going to be very different. So an inflammatory food for one person could be perfectly fine for anybody else. But one of the big things is that these foods actually activate your immune system and make them attack that food. When it happens frequently enough, that's a source of stress in the body. Some common inflammatory foods that most people might be eating are gluten, any kind of vegetable oil or hydrogenated oil, lots of processed or added sugars, um, also, soy can be one, and then also processed carbohydrates, just to, name, just to name a few. So the next thing is basic psychological stress. That could be unpaid bills, it could be going to a job you dislike, or uh, you know, having a tough time in a relationship that you're in. The thing is, your body responds the exact same way to all stresses. Whether you're having an uncomfortable argument, or in an actual real-life fight-or-flight situation, your body only has one stress button. And if you're hitting it enough, the thing is, you will start to cause dysfunction. So as we touched on above, uh, muscle can start to break down, your body will actually have a harder time using and producing energy, and then also on top of that, cortisol will cause the uh, thyroid to actually slow down. The basic precursors for our steroidal hormones, testosterone for men and estrogen for women, will be stolen to support the production of basic stress hormones. So the last two we're gonna be going over is using too low carb of a diet for too long. The thing is, I'm a huge advocate of a low carb diet, but from time to time, you do have to introduce some carbohydrates to be able to make sure that you can support the conversion of your inactive thyroid hormone T4 to T3. If you're not able to do that, what can actually happen is your thyroid will slow down because you don't have enough of the actual hormone that's usable in the body. The very last one that we're gonna be covering today is having too much caffeine too frequently. So I'm a huge fan of coffee. I have my cup in the morning. But the thing is, if people are using caffeine <clears throat> all day long to prop up their energy levels, it will artificially be causing bumps in the stress hormones that are released throughout the body. So those are the ways that you might be unintentionally lowering your metabolism. In the very next video, what we're going to be covering is the ways that you can actually boost up your metabolism. As always, you can find me on Instagram at Evolve Nutritional Therapy. You can find me on Twitter at Evolve NT PDX. Or you can email me at evolvent.pdx at gmail.com. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.